Welcome to Polygon Division. In this tutorial, we're gonna be making a snowball fight, but I don't want you to get stuck in the trap of the project itself. I want you to see the bigger picture here and how these tools that we're gonna be building can be used for other things, not just a snowball fight. Granted, they are cute, aren't they? So let's dive in. Okay, so here we are inside of a blank project and I've created a floor that's 1,000 by 1,600 centimeters by 20 high. This is gonna be the ground that our snowballs collide on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off in the viewport, apply a collider tag on it. So I'm gonna to go to simulation, collider. I don't want you putting the other collider, which is under the bullet tags. It is the incorrect. We're gonna be working with particles and that one which is under the bullet tag will not work. First, we're gonna start off with adding a particle emitter, the basic emitter, and I'll drag it back here, lift it up a little bit and rotate it upwards. We're gonna lob these. If I just hit play, We've got a steady stream of particles. I want to make this as though it's coming from a specific source and they're being thrown from a from somebody's arm. So I'm going to go here to the size, and just change this to zero, zero, and zero. And we have a steady constant stream. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to pulse and bring this down to one, one, and then our gap is going to give us the distance between each particle. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the radius to 10 and we don't see anything. That's going to have to deal with the particle radius that you're going to see when we add a cloner. So I'm going to leave that, but I want in the viewport to see that size. So go to the group here and put 10. There we go. So this particle, I want to be a snowball. So I'm going to make it white and they're just being lobbed. What we're going to do is we're going to increase the speed to something like 500 and they get launched. And I want to have these kind of go randomly in random directions. So I'm going to open up the direction tab and change this to something like 35. So it's going to randomize 35 degrees of rotation. So you can see they're kind of randomly going at different angles. Next, what we'll do is we're going to add a group to this group. We're going to add some gravity. So I'll hold shift and then click the gravity button and now they fall down and I want them to collide with the floor so I'll reselect the particle group the uh, collide so hold shift and I'm gonna have the collide at the very bottom of the group here so it works in the correct order how this works with the collide selected you can see there's a target group that it's looking for what we want to have happen is we want these particles to hit and when they collide change particle groups so to do that we're gonna add a group and I'll add it below and I'll call this one snowball so our initial is called snowball and then this is called called debris and inside of the debris we want to emit particles in the place of these particles so I'll add a reproduce so I'm gonna hold shift hit reproduce and then you can see it gives us another group and I'll call this debris result all this debris and the reason I'm calling this debris is because instead of a snowball, this could be a rock crumbling. It could be a cannonball shooting and throwing debris. It could be whatever you want. So once this hits, we want to kill the initial particle. So to do that on the debris here, we go to reproduction here and we're going to say kill source. Then what we do is we're going to have it say per particle and we're going to crank this up and I'm going to take the debris result and drag it outside of the group and drag in the collider here. We're going to drag the debris into the group. So now you can see what's happening is we get a particle that just slides along on the debris. We're going to change the offset to the same diameter, which is 10. And you can see we get a snowball that's red. that's in replace of. And what we can do is we instead of getting a perfect radius sphere of noise, if we bring this down here and put 10 here. We're going to get a random position as a splat. And because we're doing radius we're going to do half the size to get the same size. So now you can see the sphere makes a perfect replacement. And what we do is in the properties, we're going to bring down the speed of these particles to zero and we're going to continue the speed inheritance and they slide along. So to fix this on the debris, we're going to add a same group. We're going to do gravity and they're now flying through the floor. So we'll add a reselect the debris and add the collide, drag the gravity above and now they're making a splat. So now you can see those sliding. So in the collider, we're going to turn off bounce and crank up the friction and the angle variation a little bit. And let's see what we get. Now we're getting something that looks really cool. So now if you want your particles to spray out a little bit more, what you can do is you can take this speed inheritance and crank it up and get a more exaggerated effect. I'm going to leave it at 100. We can also adjust the direction inheritance and that kind of wafts it in a kind of a diagonal way, which is kind of interesting, kind of spreads out a little bit weird. You crank it up all the way kind of split flays out. I'm going to just set this to something like 10. Okay. So next you'll notice 
that we're getting an even distribution. I want to create some augmentation to that shape as though it's hitting a rough surface and has kind of inconsistencies. So to do that in the debris re results, what we're going to do is we're going to add a friction. So I'll hold shift and on the friction, we have the fields option. And what we can do is we can click here and do shader field and load up a noise. I'll take the noise and crank it up to 100% on the contrast. And now you can see we get a separate shape for each hit. And then what we can do is we can go into the friction itself, go to the object here and increase the value. And you'll notice we get this augmentation, but it's still pretty small and tight. So we can go back to our debris here and increase the speed inheritance. Let's try 150. Now you'll also notice there's like a stepping effect that's happening here. If you're getting a really bad step when it lands, what you do is hit control Control D or go to edit scene settings and you're going to crank this sub steps up to something like five. I already did it beforehand, but I'll show you what it looks like before it. I don't know if you can see it on YouTube, but let's see if I turn off the floor here. You'll see what I'm talking about. It has a steppiness to it when it hits. So you can crank this up to get a smoother slide and spill onto the ground. So with the debris here, we can go into the properties and change the color to white. I'm leaving the radius to one. I'll just leave it that. And um, there you go. That's basically the effect. So now if I want to come up with my own custom snowball shape, like you make a sphere and do a deformer, it's super easy. So what you do is you go to the sphere, set it to something like five, turn on the edges. So NB is in boy, turn this up something like 60, change it to hexahedron. And then what we can do is we can come in here to our deformer, add a displacer, add a noise to the displacer. So there's our snowball and we can adjust the amount. It's something that feels snowballish. Now what we can do is we can just right click on this and say current state of object snowball one and then come into the displacer again and change the randomness. So we get another random one. Do the same thing current state of object and do like three or four or five variations of that. And then we don't need this anymore. We're done. Add a cloner, call this snowball, add our two objects in. I would suggest doing like five at minimum. Set the snowball from clone iterate to random. So it randomizes, we'll change it to object. And then you drag in your snowball group, particle group into the field here. And now we're over here. You can see there's our snowball. Now, if you've got a bunch of these snowballs being launched and a bunch of these debris, when you do the debris one, you're going to most definitely want to click multi-instance. That's going to save the memory on your computer. And so your scene won't be so heavy, especially when you do the smaller particles. These guys here, if you're setting it to instance, your computer is going to lock up. So I can do another emitter here, call this debris, set it to object, drag in your debris here, and then add your elements inside, like a little shrapnel, little flakes and things like that into the debris field. And then when it comes time to render, what you need to do is you need to turn off your particle groups visibility because Redshift, I think by default, will automatically render them out. And you don't want those visible along with the particles that are created from the cloners. So one last thing I wanted to show you is I've increased the timeline and I'm launching a whole bunch and I want to make these small particles melt away. And this is super easy to do. So in order to do that, we're going to select the debris result, go to data mapper and hold shift. We're going to change this slope, right click, go to save linear and we're going to fade this down. So I'll just invert it. And what we want to do is we want to set the max range. I'll set this to 60 and the max range on the output to 60. Instead of having it say position, we're going to change it to lifetime. So it's saying, hey, age zero to 60, change the lifetime zero to 60. And then what we can do is if we play this, they're just going to fade out and disappear all at once, but we can enable the noise and now they'll appear as though they're melting. We can also come in here and change the scene scale of the noise to something smaller and we get a tighter pattern that melts away. And that's how it work in real life is you kind of, so thicker areas will peel away slower. So we're getting that effect. And then if you want to make it fade out more, you can just change this value to a higher number. And these two should be the same. Doesn't totally matter, but I would keep them the same for this effect. And there you go. Now they're melting away. And what this allows you to do is because it is killing them is it allows you to have more particles. So on my snowball emitter, you can see I'm emitting two at a time. I can do three at a time and I'm recording this and you can see my computer is not slowing down. So there you go. That's it. I hope you found it useful. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.